So the good Lord today in the gospel seems to say something that would almost appear kind of harsh, as, as happens sometimes. Uh, in the gospel, the expressions used can be somewhat maybe <coughs> blunter or clearer uh, than, than our politically correct minds allow us to, to, to enunciate today. Uh, but he says, it's, it's, just, it's, a very, it's a very clear story. So someone working in the fields and there's a landowner and then when the, 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 the plowman comes in, uh, he doesn't so much, the, the landowner doesn't so much thank the plowman, thank you for doing such an amazing job, this is, this is, this is quite fantastic, you know, fair play to you, sit down and rest yourself. Uh, he actually says, you know, get cleaned up and, and serve me while I'm having my dinner. Right, and then you can, you can eat yourself afterwards. So, uh, must he be grateful? Must the servant, uh, sorry, must the landowner be grateful to the servant when the servant has simply only done what he was supposed to do? He just did his job. Okay. So I was talking to someone yesterday, and the topic of forgiveness came up, and the topic of, of God's mercy. So how, how does it work that, that God is so merciful and that God forgives us, even though we're not really worthy of it? So this, she was just, this lady was just really struggling with the, with the concept of God's mercy. And, and like, we, we, we don't deserve it. Now, Often when a person struggles greatly with, uh, with the idea of God's mercy or forgiveness, it does go back to their home experience and maybe the, the experience with their dad. Uh, was their dad merciful? Was their dad forgiving? Was their dad uh, the kind of person who would build you up and, and lift you up uh, when, you, when you fell? Or was he more the type who would kind of point the finger and accuse you of not being good enough? So often people who struggle with, with God's mercy uh, struggled in those kind of ways too with their relationships at home. So this idea that, that she found just very difficult to understand or get her head around was why would God be so merciful? That we don't really deserve God's mercy. And I said, well, bottom line, you're right. <laughs> we, don't deserve, we don't deserve God's mercy. We don't deserve God's mercy. That's not to say that we shouldn't have God's mercy, but we don't deserve it, nor do we earn it. Okay, so when it comes to God's mercy, God's mercy is a gift. It's a gift. And very often, when we receive gifts, we haven't earned them. We don't deserve them, but we, we've received them, or we should at least receive them. You know, it's a, when someone offers you a gift, and, and, and what are you supposed to do? What should you do? Like, if you say, oh, I don't deserve that, take it back. It's kind of offensive to the giver, you know? So when, when a gift is, 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 is given, we receive the gift with joy, with gratitude, with thankfulness, not because we've earned it, but because the giver wishes to love us in that way. So God wishes to love us in this way by forgiving us if we want that gift. If we want that gift. Some people don't. Some people don't want God's mercy. I've done nothing wrong. Stop accusing me. Stop making me feel bad. Rather than saying, well, look, I honestly, okay, I could have, I could have done better. I was out of line. I'm sorry. I... I accept your mercy. So that's like the greatness of God's mercy that forgives us, forgives us even though we don't deserve it. Uh, but that's also, unfortunately, not, I wouldn't say matched by, but the gravity of our sin generally is greater than we believe too. So God's mercy needs to be so great because our sin is quite substantially greater than we believe too. Often, you see, we don't fully see the consequences of our sin. Uh, and this was also uh, what came up in, in this conversation yesterday with that person, uh, where she said she was just uh, quite aware that she said if I if I she's a mom and she was saying you know if I if I'm short with my kids, if I'm blunt with them, if I'm if I actually get angry, you know they can grow up resenting God, they can grow up resenting motherhood, they can grow up resenting, and they can grow up all sorts of all sorts of problems because I didn't parent them as I was supposed to. So she said, like, you know, so then every time I lose the head with the kids, I, I get angry at them, and then I get angry at myself for getting angry at them, and then I think, oh my goodness, what's, what's God going to think of me now? You know, I've, I've failed as a mother. I've failed. I've, I've failed to be an example of virtue, of forgiveness, of love. And now, you know, the consequences, everything that's going to happen to my kids years, maybe even after I'm gone, and then to the, what, 
how they will treat their kids because of how I've treated them. It's all my fault, you know, and then the whole thing just started to weigh her down. And in a way, it's not actually, in a way, there's a healthy version of looking at that too. Yes, it is true that our, the consequences of our actions, the consequences of our sin may actually go, may continue long after we're gone. You know, so like when you see alcoholism in a family, for example, often then the children suffer in the same way, and then when they go on to have kids, it's, 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 often you see, you see it pass through the generations in a family. Uh, even though everyone has suffered because of it, it just, it just becomes uh, a way out. You know? uh, it can be very, very difficult to overcome. Like that's, why, that's the opportunity given to us then for one generation to say, no, it stops now. It stops now. It stops with me. I am not passing this on. But it's hard. You know, it's difficult. So God's mercy is great because it needs to be great. Uh, because there's, there really is there's, there's so much rejection of him in the world. And it needs to be great because there's so much sin. There is so much sin. Like, I mean, I'm not putting you, if you notice the position of my hands, they're not at the same height. It's not because I've got a stiff shoulder or anything. God's mercy is divine. It's infinitely greater than any amount of, of, of human sin. But human sin isn't nothing either. It's not. It cost him his life. So it is something. It is serious. It is, it is heavy. But it's not infinite. It's not infinite. When we think of the, the, the gravity of sin, uh, Archbishop Fulton Sheen, he describes it this way. If you're at a bus stop and some random person, say you're in Dublin. No, no, people aren't friendly in Dublin. Cork. Say you're in Cork. People are very friendly in Cork. So you're at a bus stop in Cork. And uh, some kind of randomer just, you know, gives you the, the typical cork salute, which is the elevation of the bottom jaw. And, you know, and if you just look at me and you say, well, I, I don't know you, so you just kind of, you kind of ignore them, right? It's, it's not polite, but it's no big deal, right? Uh, if, on the other hand, a sibling of yours is to say to you, you know, good morning, Tom, and you go, hmm. <laughs> That's a little more serious because of the relationship, okay? And then on the other hand, if like an infinitely loving God speaks to you, uh, brings you into existence, blesses you every day with all, with all that exists around you, and our reaction is, the, even though the reaction, objectively speaking, is the same, right? So person at the bus stop, kind of ignore them. Family member, kind of ignore them. God, kind of ignore them. Your reaction is the same. The gravity of that sin is far greater because it's proportional to the relationship that you have with that person. Get it? So when you say the same thing to a family member, that's far worse than saying it to someone you don't know. But then when we say that same thing to an infinitely loving God, infinitely loving God, it makes the gravity of, of, of the sin far, far heavier, far more serious because we are so infinitely loved by him. So we don't want to kind of get pulled down into this kind of vortex of negativity and sin, 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 but at the same time just to recognize that when we sin, we're rejecting this infinitely loving God. So God's mercy needs to be just enormous, divine, greater than we can ever fathom, because our sin is far greater than we believe. So then at the end of our lives, like, you know, we, we won't, I don't think we should uh, consider finding ourselves before the Lord, boasting about how much good we did. You know, Lord, I mean, I recycled. I bought bamboo socks to save the environment. I've done my part. <laughs> you know what I mean? And kind of patting ourselves on the back for being so just amazing. You know, what have we done but the little that God asked us to do? You know, we're merely servants. We've done no, no more than our duty. Even if we've done a holy hour every day of our lives, two holy hours every day of our lives, two holy hours and gone to Mass and gone to Medjugorje every, every, every uh, summer and uh, I'm, I'm part-time sacristan and part-time florist and in the church and uh, part of the Legion of Mary and I sing in the choir and uh, I sterilize the benches and all that kind of thing. Even after all of that, you've just done your duty. You've done no more than your duty. So like, there's, we never have motive to, to pat ourselves on the back, no matter how much we do. We've only done our duty. You know, even like as, as, as a priest, the very same thing. There's no point in me saying, oh, I've worn my collar every day and I've prayed the liturgy of the hours. I've done no more than my duty. No more. 
in the face of how often we've fallen, in the face of our need for God's infinite mercy, we've done no more than our duty. And that keeps us, it gives us a healthy recognition of two things. You'll pardon the use of this expression, but it's a very St. Faustine and Divine Mercy expression. But to know our misery, to know our misery and to know God's mercy. To know our misery and to know God's mercy. It's such a gift. Because then we will recognize that no matter how much good we do, we've only done our duty. So we ask the good Lord today to renew our hearts in acceptance of his mercy, in recognition of his great mercy, in recognition of our great need for him, our great need for conversion. Lord, that we might live each day in gratitude for we are merely servants and have done no more than our duty. Amen.